with another video. This one's a little different. As you can see from uh, the title, which isn't written yet, it's going to be something along the lines of the first Seagull Merlin M4 lesson you should ever watch. Something along those lines. So we already did a bunch of 101 basic stuff. And we're not going to go over too much of that stuff, but we're going to do a little bit, just touch on it. If you want to expand on it, go back uh, and watch those other 101 videos. But this video never occurred to me to do until yesterday. I had one of my subscribers contact me that lives in BC, in, BC, in Vancouver, where, close to where I am, and wanted a one-on-one -on -one lesson, so we met yesterday. And... I think what it is, because I've been playing other instruments for so long, I don't remember the beginning days, right? There's... I don't know. It's just uh, a lot of stuff that we touched on yesterday that I, I never occurred to me before. So I figured, well, let's uh, do a first lesson. Or the first lesson you should ever watch, whatever. Uh, so we'll start right... From buying one in the store before you even even uh, own one like if you go the problem around here and this I don't know if this is everywhere but Merlins are still hard to find here you know the, I, I know they're becoming more and more popular and they're in, introducing new models but you can still only get the D model where I am on the website they do have the new models the G and the G is not a new model anyway it's like two years old and they've got the EQ model, which is a couple months old. Or, no, because that was around New Year's, so that's almost eight months. But you still can't find them in stores. Long McQuay and Tom Lee. So I've, I've, freaking, I've given up on, on the G. Because I, I do plan on buying a G one day when I can try a few out. And that's uh, the first thing, okay? So when you go to the store, most likely they won't have any at all. And if they do, they only have one. But if they do have more than one, even if they're in the back and only got one display, tell them you want to try them all. You know, even as a beginner, you might not hear the difference between them, right? It's, it's like a car, you know, you go buy a car, even though 20 Fords are, are 200,000 Fords are produced in a year for that single model, and they're all produced the same, you still want to have some in those they're not as good, right? They're just lemons or whatever. It's the same with a music instrument. If you can try a couple of stories, and you might not hear the difference in the sound between them, but you can hear if if something got broken in shipping, like if, if the, well, you won't hear it because it's zero fret, but if there's something that happened with the bridge, and there's something that just does not sound right, right? You want to see that. You want to take a look at things I don't really care about. Like you can see mine's getting pretty big and beat up. But you want to try them all and see which one sounds the best, which one plays the best. Like there could be, like one bridge might not have been set up in the action. The string height might might be higher than another one, so it might be easier to play. So try everyone in the store. Once you get it home, you got no musical no musical uh, experience at all with instruments there's a couple things to start with first when we were doing that lesson yesterday I noticed uh, without a strap you kind of play the Merlin like this and that might work for some people this is how I play guitar but with the Merlin being the shape and the size that it is I find it easier up here and, and so did she I got her a, a strap that Seagull actually sent me by accident when I heard some other stuff, I, I, she put a strap and it made a huge difference, right? Uh, when you're playing chords, uh, you want to be as close to the fret with that finger. You don't want to be in the middle, you want to be right up next to it. Like if you play back here versus with the same amount of pressure, you have to be right up next to the fret. As you start out, you will notice that when you're playing chords, you'll get stuff like that. All it is is, is practice. 
takes time for you to get the pressure in your fingers. Like, if you've never played anything before, it takes a little bit of muscle memory to get to the point where you have enough pressure to make it sound right. If you have to bridge over other strings, like when you do the G, by bridging I mean, because your tendency is gonna want to be lay your finger down, but you're gonna hit the string there. You gotta bridge over it so that one sounds. So that takes time too. And it's just a matter of playing and playing and playing and eventually your, your finger strength will build up. You will uh, get more muscle memory to where your fingers need to be without looking. That's a big thing. It takes a long time for this. You know, I don't want to kid anybody. I, back in the day, I was telling this to somebody the other day. You know, I don't have the back in the day stories like you used to have back in but uh, I grew up in a little little town. No, no inter or no, no, no internet back then. No uh, cable. We had the antenna on a roof, and you could listen to the radio and you could figure out stuff from playing with the radio. But what I used to do, and I'm not a church goer. I'm not, never have been. But <laughs> my family doesn't even know this. What I would do Sunday morning. When those church programs would come on and there was always the live music on them, I used to play along with that. And what that did was not only you play to try and match up the sound, but every once in a while it would show the guitar player and it would show what chord you're doing. And that gives you an up to where you need to be, right? And it, it takes time. It, it, was, it, takes, it takes years to get really good. You see some of these YouTube videos uh, uh, where they take uh, a video every week for for a year of learning. They're actually pretty cool. I've seen some pretty cool ones, right? And it just takes time. It's practice and patience. It's like I keep telling you guys, right? So that's string pressure, string bridging, and you want to be up to the frets. So finger position, right? Uh, when I'm playing certain chords, the thumb is anchored here and then there's sometimes where I'm using my thumb and it's over right and you just get used to it and the best thing to do the three main chords you want to learn on the Merlin first is your D which is the easiest one all open 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 second is your A which is one open one so first fret, open on the middle string, first fret. And then your G. G is going to be the hardest one to learn because especially if you don't have any dexterity in your pinky. You can try like that, but get to the point where you can put that pinky on there. Because uh, on the Merlin, using a pinky is very important. You will get... Uh, It's just, it opens up so much more, so many more doors if you can get your pinky working along side all the other fingers, right? So you learn your a, D, A, and your G. G is open, one, three. Okay, now another problem we encountered yesterday, somebody looking at tabs and chord charts when you've never seen them before, they make no sense. And I do remember this. I remember trying to learn what the hell tab was back in the day. And how, how to read chord charts. On a guitar it's a little bit easier. Uh, on a Merlin. Because really it's you're labeled D-A-D. So which D is which. Which you know. So when you're looking at a chord chart. Oh yeah. Give me a second. I'm so unprepared, you know me, right? So let's just do an exaggerated version. So D A D. Can you guys see that? I hope so. So uh, pencil's too faint. Hold on a sec. Luckily I do my lessons right on the drunk jar. But unfortunately, it's a junk drawer and I can't find anything over in here. Alright. 
so D A C so you're gonna have something like that right and those are your names so the D up here is gonna be your highest D your A is gonna be your A and then the, that D on the bottom is gonna be your low D so if you're looking at it like that that's how it is right so on a D chord you're doing zero 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 that one's easy on the A chord one zero one that one's easy because it's just a mere image right but now when you do your G chord now you have to know that this is high high string so that's a double string sometimes a high string instead of the D on the top you'll have two small D's like this this will be here and that's an indication that that's your double chorus of strings where the two strings side by side so your top line is going to be your high string okay now tab <coughs> if you've never seen tab before what this means zero 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 means an open string the one means the first fret so be your first fret and then your three zero one three will be open one first fret third fret on the higher now the G can be played the other way as well for this purpose this is what we're doing and that follows suit for all all uh, tabs like I don't post tabs I haven't been as I'm going to change as soon as the weather changes and gets fall and more quiet I, I said that before and it is still coming I just haven't done it yet but I used to post tabs and if you go to the Seagull Merlin Google Plus page great page if you're not on there yet I keep telling people uh, you click my name and search all the way to the bottom of my post and that's where my tabs are I haven't posted in such a long time and then on there you want to find CJ he's one of the moderators so you should be able to find him in a thing CJ if you see this okay that core chart you got you've got to tag that to the top because people keep searching to it right if I know if you I don't know if that's possible on uh, on uh, the Google pages but if you can somehow tag that core chart to the top or put it in the side just so it's easy access but that's the core chart you want to find it's just every every single every single uh, chord that can be played on Merlin is in that chart and it was all done up by CJ I can close that marker I can smell that uh, okay so those are the three chords you want to start with your D your A and your G. Now you got your Merlin home, you're working on those chords, you're learning them. This is where you're gonna sit for the next month. This is all you want to do. And people talking about your rhythm hand. How do you get the rhythm going, right? As you can see, my forearm is anchored to the Merlin. It, can you even see that? No, I can't. My forearm is anchored to the Merlin. And I'm not doing any up and down. It's all in your wrist. It's something that will come over time. And everybody, I, that's the main question. What everybody asks: How do I get? How do I get that rhythm? What's this drum pattern? Don't worry about it. Don't even worry about that yet. What all you're going to do, more important than your, your strumming and your, your strum pattern, is the other hand. What you want to do is those three chords, play them over and over and over again for the next month, and just change between them. You want to get to the point where you can just change. Doesn't matter.
matter what sequence you do them in, none of that matters. You just want to get to the point where you can change and they sound altering sound. Like you're not. You want all string sounding and you want to make effortless changing. By the time you get this down, your rhythm hand will be there. It'll just come out automatically. It's just, don't think about it, don't worry about it, worry about this hand. Just keep playing and getting those chord changes in there. And actually, you should throw that in there as well. Once you learn no three chords, play in a month, the next chord you should learn is your B minor, which is going to be two, one, open. With those four chords, there are thousands and thousands of songs you can do. You ever see those videos where... Uh, People are making fun of all these songs that you can play with only four chords, or three chords for that matter, but the four chord version is always going to be C, A minor, F, and G. That's always going to be, like, there's so many songs for all the way from the f beginning of music till today. You know, yeah, and translated to the Merlin, because the C becomes a D, the A minor becomes a B minor, your F becomes an A, No, sorry. Your F becomes a G, and then your G becomes the A. So that's once you get those chords learnt. Once you get to the B minor stage, this is your next step. So it's going to be D, Instead of, but let's not even worry about that right now. Let's do it the other way. So that's uh, the, the one that comes to my mind all the time is Last Kiss by Wednesday. Where, where can my baby be? That's those chords there. But there's so many songs. Uh, What's that one? Uh, it's a Black Eyed Peas song. Part something, I don't know. I don't even know why I know it on guitar, but it's the same chords. Oh, there's so many songs that just fit these chord patterns. And like I said, the strumming hand comes after. Get you to the point where you can change between chords. That's the most important thing. Once you get that, your strumming hand should be halfway decent. You can work on anything later on. And then from that point on, once you get sufficient in changing chords without like the muscle memory built up in this hand where it's second nature, then start looking at songs. You know, it's it's all fun and dandy to learn, to learn songs. Fun and dandy? Did I just say dandy? It's all well and good <laughs> to uh, start playing songs right in the box. And you know, some people can. But... The song's not going to sound good if you can't do your changes. If you, if you can't... If you can't... Uh, keep time, right? If you have to... If you're playing... And then you have to look and... You have to learn the changes first. That's all I'm trying to point out. Uh, now, I've said this before, and I, you know, I come off as kind of a ass when I when I bring this up, but it keeps getting posted. People keep asking the same question. This uh, CJ, if you're watching this far into the video, who's another thing that needs to be pinned at the top? Find the best explanation of the intonation and the string problem on the middle string. Pin that to the top too because that questions all the time. I don't ask her. I don't answer them anymore because, like I said, I think I become a little bit of an asshole when I answer these questions. It's not intonation problem. It's it's just that's not how it works. Intonation. 
basic, basic understanding that I have that I'm going to pass on to you. Intonation is the further up the neck you come, the worse it's going to be. Right? If it's... Most people are complaining about it right there. If your intonation is off right here, time you get up here, because this is another D, so D, D, they should sound the same. So they, that's, sorry, that's an A string. But. By the time you get up here, that if your intonation is off here, by the time you come up to this fret, you're gonna be, it's gonna be a B. You're not gonna be playing an A anymore, because if your intonation is bad here, by here, you know what's a good example of this? Okay, I haven't done anything with this G Merlin. It's not a G Merlin, it's a D that I've converted into a, some sort of monster. But I put really thick strings on there without changing the bridge. So the intonation on this is way off. You hear the difference? That's the same note. That's an intonation problem. When it sounds here, that's not an intonation problem. That's an uh, operator problem. See, see, that's why this is why it makes me an asshole. This is why I shouldn't talk about it. But it is an operator problem. It's a beginner problem. I had it too. I played guitar for 25 years. I bought the Merlin. I had that problem for like three months. It was annoying. It pissed me off. But at my point, I knew it was an intonation problem. I knew it was my problem. And you have to overcome it. Uh, Sam, another moderator for the Google Plus page, what he did, how much time do I have left on this video? I don't want to make sure I run out of tape. A tape. Of space. What he did is he changed the middle string to a wound string. So what that did, a thicker string is going to have more tension than a thinner string. So with more tension, it's harder to push down, which solved the problem. The problem with the Merlin is not intonation, it has nothing to do with the bridge. There's two problems with the Merlin in my eyes. First is the frets they use. They're using frets that are too big. The problem, because just if you can hear this, so this is just light pressure, that's how you should play. Now if you push down all the way to the, so the string is on the wood, That's no bend. That's just pushing too hard. That's the first problem. The second problem, when you're playing chords, because your dexterity and your finger memory isn't there, you're gonna have a tendency to pull down or push up whichever way it's gonna be to get it, all right? You gotta eliminate that problem, right? You have to go straight down. But if you're doing a bend, yeah, it's gonna sound off, straight down. And there's times, and I've, I've mentioned this in videos before, you'll see it in songs I'm playing. If I'm playing a song, there's times where, especially the bar chords, you go up here and you hit it and it's like, oh, the shit that's off. What you do is release it and go right back. Like if you hit it, because if you're changing chords fast, you might go off. Just release it and go right back down and that, that will solve the issue. Don't push too hard. That's all I'm saying about intonation because I'm not, I'm not getting into trouble with that again. I think I actually lost subscribers last time I mentioned intonation. Uh, tuning, we did a whole video on tuning. It's a really crappy video. <laughs> I know that it's a really long video. No, that was string change one. Oh, the tuning and string change ones are so they're, they're both bad. But they got tons of views, so I'm just gonna leave them up. Maybe, maybe if some if somebody wants a more detailed, I don't know how to get more more detailed in a 30 minute string change video. Let me know. Uh, all the tips, trips, uh, tips are in there. And then as for what else can we cover? So strap, intonation, oh, of course to play. That's about it. That should be from the time you buy it to the first month of playing. That should be everything you need to know. You won't do a string change in that first month. Most people, when they get their strings, they won't do a string change for a couple months, which 
once you get you it's such the thing the thing okay this last topic when is it time to change your strings this should actually be its own one-on-one, even though it'll only be a minute long, but just so it's a separate title. But we're going to do it here in a way. When you first start playing, your strings deteriorate over time. Like, they will lose... Uh, it's called going dead. Your strings go dead. They don't ring like they used to. This one's getting there, which is good, because damn, then I can finally try, try your strings. It's getting there. Pro probably not till I'm back from my trip. But... A really good rule of thumb, and this is the easiest, well, as a beginner, you don't hear it, because it happens so gradually that you don't hear it. It's not a big decline, it's, it's just gradual, right? As your ear becomes more trained, as you play more and more, eventually you'll get to the ear and you're like, that string's just dead. I don't have anything here that has old strings on it. But a good rule of thumb, and this is going to sound stupid, and actually, it works, is after you're done playing, smell your fingers. Everybody knows that if you've been handling money all day, right, change, you get that smell on your, like, the copper smell or that, the metal smell on your fingers. If you've been playing all day and that's what your fingers smell like, that, that metal coppery penny smell, it's time to change your strings. They're dead. They're done. That, that, when you get to the point where they're smelling like that, it's, it's, they're starting to actually corrode, they're starting to rust, so. And you don't think it's the, but you, you have so much moisture on your hands and so many oils on your hands that it does take a toll on your, on your strings. There's people out there, because the unwound strings will last a lot while longer than a wound string. That if you, you can knock the stuff out of there. I don't think so. I've tried it. I've never had it work. So, uh, pennies. Yeah, when your fingers smell like pennies, it's time to change your strings. And anything else? And this is uh, actually a good video for beginner questions. Because everything gets so spread out, it's hard to keep up. That's why I did that request video, which is going nuts, people. Come on, calm down. Uh, but any beginner type questions, post them here. Post them on the Google Plus page because there's so many people there that will get to you faster than me. Usually I go through my comments twice a month and answer everything. So I answer every comment, I answer every question, but uh, it just takes me a little while to do it. That's it. One more thing. One more thing. Because this is another thing. And this is recent development for me. So we all eventually buy these clip-on tuners, tuners. I resisted for such a long time. And I just love it, you know, when you're playing with other musicians, it picks up you only. It doesn't pick anything else up in your room. Used to be when you were tuning, you had to tell everyone, shh, 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 shh. Stop, and it would go on and on, right? Because when you pick it, it was a pain in the ass. So these clip-on tuners are awesome, okay? Now, when you're using them, this is twofold for guitar and for Merlin. For guitar, I started tuning with it capoed on a fifth fret. And I tune it to A and go from that way. And then I take the capo off and it's perfect. I don't know if it's just my tuner that makes makes that problem, but I find if I tune open and then capo on the seventh, like if I'm doing uh, something on the seventh fret, it's out of tune. So if I tune to the fifth, it works perfectly. Merlin, that's not a problem. But with Merlin, if you play with a pick, I think what it is is because a pick hits harder, has a tendency to sound sharp on your tuner. So when I tune the Merlin, I just use my thumb and just hit it lightly. So that one's a little sharp. And I find I get a lot better, a lot better tuning by doing it with your fingers instead of a pick. I don't know, like I said, that could just be my tuner. Because it is like a uh, $4 special off Amazon. It's not like an actual shark, snark, whatever those tuners are called. But it does the job for me. Okay, that's it. The first lesson you should watch before you, I don't know, I'll figure out a title, you'll see it down there. 
<laughs> right, that's it. Uh, practice patience, have fun. That's maybe enough time to do a guitar video. All right, we'll see you guys next time.